Special Reports is a daily show that will cover issues surrounding the economic collapse. All our reports and daily alert news are backed up by source links. We work very hard to bring you the facts, and we research everything before presenting the report. Subscribe for latest on financial crisis, oil price, global economic collapse, dollar collapse, gold, silver, bitcoin, global reset, new world order, economic collapse, economic news, political, geopolitical news. Today, we talk about, martial law is no conspiracy, something big is going on. Former U.S. Congressman and Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul joins Alex Jones of Infowars, talk with us about one of the most dangerous pieces of legislation to come across Congress in a long time. What Jones calls soft, creeping, frog in the pole, we learn here that martial law in America is no conspiracy theory as even Democratic Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut is calling SJ Res 29 a declaration of international martial law as seen in this speech in the second video below in full. With the global economy now in free fall and even stores in the U.S. beginning to feel the hit as shared in this new story from SHTFPLAN's Jeremiah Johnson who tells us about store inventory levels being reduced nationwide, the warning to stock up now while we still can rings out loud and true, especially with talk of martial law now in the air and within U.S. Congress. Senator Murphy's warning to America should not go unheeded and Ron Paul completely backs up his warning and goes beyond what Murphy has told us is outlined below. Quotes this resolution is a total rewrite of the War Powers Clause of the Constitution. Let's be clear about that, Democrat Senator Chris Murphy said on the Senate floor last week in regards to S.J. Res. 29, a bill purporting to give the sitting U.S. President the power to declare war on ISIS. It is essentially a declaration of international martial law, Murphy said. A sweeping transfer of military power to the president that will allow him or her to send U.S. troops almost anywhere in the world for any reason with absolutely no limitations, Senator Murphy described, adding that Article I, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution vests in Congress the responsibility to declare war. While the ink is still wet on this resolution, it's safe to say that this resolution is the wrong way to authorize war against ISIS, Murphy said. The language of this resolution is dangerous and it is unprecedented. The American people certainly don't want Congress to hand over the power to the President to send our troops into any country anywhere in the world for almost any reason. And that's what this resolution would do. With Senator Lindsey Graham among the four co-sponsors of this bill, Ron Paul warned on his own website that if this open-ended war authorization is passed, the U.S. Constitution will have become all but a dead letter. Do we really want Barack Obama? or any other president for that matter, to have the ability to do whatever they want with our military, including deploying them against the American people within our own country? From Ron Paul While the Washington snowstorm dominated news coverage this week, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was operating behind the scenes to rush through the Senate what may be the most massive transfer of power from the legislative to the executive branch in our history. The senior senator from Kentucky is scheming, along with Senator Lindsey Graham to bypass normal Senate procedure to fast-track legislation to grant the President the authority to wage unlimited war for as long as he or his successors may wish. The legislation makes the unconstitutional Iraq War Authorization of 2002 look like a walk in the park. It will allow this President and future Presidents to wage war against ISIS without restrictions on time, geographic scope, or the use of ground troops. It is a completely open-ended authorization for the president to use the military as he wishes for as long as he or she wishes. Even President Obama has expressed concern over how willing Congress is to hand him unlimited power to wage war. The purpose of the legislative branch of our government is to restrict the executive branch's power. The founders understood that an all-powerful king who could wage war at will was the greatest threat to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is why they created the People's Branch the Congress, to prevent the emergence of an all-powerful autocrat to drag the country to endless war. Sadly, Congress is surrendering its power to declare war. Let's be clear, if Senate Majority Leader McConnell succeeds in passing this open-ended war authorization, the U.S. Constitution will be all but a dead letter. While most Americans are likely clueless about the possibility of martial law in our near future, it's very easy to see the possible future need for it for that very reason. 
Most Americans are either dependent upon the government to survive in 2016 America or are struggling themselves in this economy with little time to pay attention to the global economy falling apart much less prepare themselves and their families for what's likely to come. When it all hits the fan and the meltdown is complete, millions of people in all of the big cities across America will likely be totally unprepared and has been reported many times on AMP and across the alternative news. Massive civil unrest and the total breakdown of society are strong possibilities that the government will have to contend with if it manages to stay intact. From CBS Los Angeles just today we learned that the LAPD is warning the people of Los Angeles to prepare for longer than usual emergency response times and advising them to prepare to protect themselves. They say more officers are necessary. We also learned today from the New York Times that rationing has begun in America and we should expect that shortages will be the new normal in medicine. Across the country more signs of collapse emerge daily that help to prove to us that not only will martial law likely be put into place, but for very good reason once the collapse enters breakneck speed. Without law and order in the big cities of America during total collapse, they'll quickly turn into death zones. As Ron Paul and Alex Jones proved to us in this video, of course martial law isn't a conspiracy theory. It may indeed one day be the rule of law in America and some argue it already is as the country completes its financial plummet and likely hundreds of millions of Americans go completely unprepared for the outcome. Of course, for our friends and families and loved ones and first responders and Americans across the country, we pray that this never happens in America. We'd be ignorant and foolish, though to ignore the warning signs and to avoid preparing our own selves and families for the eventual outcome that comes about as the economy prepares to hit rock bottom. We'd like to think that those Americans who are prepared for such events will be assets to the authorities who impose martial law as the prepared won't be looting the stores and robbing their neighbors, but will be staying away from the madness as best we can. We need to be ready for it though. As we are warned here, the big event is in our sight. We see Duterte considers martial law for entire Philippines. The Philippine president has threatened to impose martial law nationwide to combat a serious threat in the southern region of Mindanao after fighters there beheaded the police officer and took churchgoers hostage. The ongoing violence has forced thousands to flee the city of Marawi, located about 816 kilometers south of the capital Manila. I will not hesitate to do anything and everything to protect and preserve the Filipino nation. Rodrigo Duterte said on Wednesday after arriving back in Manila from his trip to Russia. I might declare martial law throughout the country to protect the people. Duterte declared martial law on Tuesday in Mindanao, which makes up roughly one-third of the Philippines and is home to 20 million people, in an immediate response to the attacks by the fighters. The military claimed to have killed at least 13 fighters, members of groups that have pledged allegiance to the Islamic State of Iraq and the group. The roughly 100 attackers roamed through Marawi, killing five soldiers, taking a priest and an unspecified number of other people hostage from a church, setting fire to buildings and flying black and silk flags, according to Duttert and his aides. Duttert said the fighters beheaded the local police chief after capturing him at a road checkpoint. Local television station GMA News also published exclusive images of nine civilians, who were reportedly killed by the armed fighters. ABS-CBN television channel also quoted the Interior Ministry as saying that the fighters managed to take control of the city jail and freed 107 prisoners. The violence first erupted on Tuesday after the army raided the hideout of Isnalan Hapilan, a commander of the Ablisayef group. Ablisayef then called for reinforcements from an allied group, the MOT, and dozens of fighters managed to enter Marawi, home to about 200,000 people. In ensuing clashes with the attackers, Security personnel lost three of their comrades. The attackers reportedly burned the Catholic Church, the city jail, and two schools, as well as occupied the main streets and two bridges leading to Marawi. Archbishop Socrates Villegas, president of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of the Philippines, said the fighters forced their way into the Marawi Cathedral and seized the priest, ten worshippers and three church workers. They have threatened to kill the hostages if the government forces unleashed against them are not recalled, Villegas said in a statement. The priest was not a combatant. He was not bearing arms. He was a threat to none. His capture and that of his companions violates every norm of civilized conflict. Al Jazeera's Jamal Ali Nugan, reporting from Mindanao on Wednesday, said there is an exodus of thousands of residents from Marawi. 
People have been walking for hours to try to escape the violence and get out of a city that was once the most peaceful in the southern Philippines, she said. Abu Sayyaf and Maud have been blamed for bombings, attacks against government forces and kidnappings. They have also beheaded hostages. Mindanao Emergency Tuesday's emergency declaration of the military rule on Mindanao took immediate effect and will last for 60 days, according to Ernesto Orbella, Duterte's spokesperson, said from Russia, where Duterte was on a scheduled four-day official visit. This is possible on the grounds of the existence of rebellion, Abella said. Duterte had earlier hinted declaring martial law in Mindanao on May 19, saying, If I declare martial law in Mindanao, I will solve all that ails the island. Stephen Rood, of the Asia Foundation, said there are several restrictions under the country's current post-dictatorship constitution. There is a time limit of 60 days. Will the petrodollar collapse in 2018? U.S. dollar going to collapse in 2018? The U.S. currency, relative to its competitors, is not as strong as many would like to think. Amid a series of expected interest rate hikes in the Eurozone and at the Bank of England, backed by actual economic growth, currency investors should pay attention in the coming year. It's really time to start wondering, will the U.S. dollar collapse in 2018? Consider the U.S. dollar index's long-term prospects as illustrated in the chart below. It will not tell you exactly when the dollar crash will happen. But, given that the index compares the U.S. currency's performance relative to other major currencies, it offers some sobering perspective. It's no secret that, over the course of the past three decades or so, the U.S. dollar has dropped by some 25%, compared to its rivals in the currency markets. And now, the dollar is about to collapse. The oil industry and geopolitical risks have gone hand in hand. Oil represents energy, and without it, modern economies cannot run. Salt, sugar, and spices were also strategic resources once. But even at the peak of their appeal and value, they are mere shadows of oil's importance to the modern world. Yet changes in the oil industry and the erosion of America's dominance over geopolitics have also hurt the U.S. dollar which has long served as the one currency that all countries must have to buy oil. The concept has become known as the petrodollar, and a petrodollar collapse in 2018 is possible, if not likely. Oil demand has been increasing slowly since the 2008 financial crisis. However, the United States, once the principal driver of the oil industry, will no longer be the primary source of demand. The new emerging economic powers like China and India will soon be dictating the terms of the price of oil. The pairing between the size of the American economy and its world-leading oil appetite is what allowed the petrodollar system to emerge. Thus, any change to one or both variables could spell the collapse of the petrodollar system. Why should you or anyone else care about the petrodollar? The petrodollar is one of the main reasons why America itself can survive on debt. It's the main reason why unlike many countries in the European Union, for example in times of turmoil, the Federal Reserve can apply monetary policies to help prevent or mask economic or financial collapse. In the 1970s, when oil prices reached their longest peaks, inflation adjusted, the producing countries which organized themselves around OPEC reinvested the billions of dollars they received as payment into the global economy. This drove the demand for dollars, sustaining their value. In other words, global oil demand turned the dollar into the world's de facto reserve currency. The U.S. economy could collapse trying to cope with the effects of a petrodollar collapse. Oil exporters agreed with the U.S. that the returns on their use would be held in dollars. Indeed, the creation of the petrodollar in 1973 coincided with the U.S. depegging the value of the dollar from gold prices to allow for fiat money. The oil producers were told they would earn returns on their dollars equivalent to those they would have earned investing in gold. The end of the petrodollar is bad news for U.S. military. Surely, countries are free to accumulate reserves of other stable currencies from the British pound or the euro. But why would they? They need dollars to buy the most critical resource, oil. 
It's the oil plus dollar system that enables the United States to invest in terribly expensive weapon systems, fund the world's biggest and most spread out military, and conduct military operations whose costs alone would cripple anyone else. Demand for oil equals demand for dollars. Thus, if some countries suddenly demand to pay for the oil they need in another reserve currency, it poses a major risk to the United States. China might be one of the primary culprits in facilitating the petrodollar breakdown. It could replace the petrodollar with the petro yuan. This is hardly far-fetched. The United States doesn't need Middle Eastern oil as much as it did 30-40 years ago. Still, many countries still do. China, for example, imports a significant percentage of its oil from Iran. As a result, there's a natural shift in demand for a currency that best suits those countries. China has proposed the yuan could replace the dollar in oil transactions. It would find string agreement in Iran, Russia, and Venezuela, which account for a large share of the oil market. The crunch is that the Chinese have also asked the Saudis to consider accepting yuan for oil. That move could even spell the end of the special military supply relationship between Washington and Riyadh. Even if the Saudis may not feel now is the right time to switch horses in the oil-slash-currency wars, they might consider diversifying the way they sell their debt. It's a given that when Saudi Arabia or other Gulf states issue all their bonds in dollars, they could move to yuan. Is the US dollar going to collapse in 2018? Whether by design, President Donald Trump claims he wants a low dollar, or by accident, the US dollar index has lost about 10% in 2017. This trend can only continue and likely accelerate in 2018. The US dollar is paying, and will continue to pay, because of the inaction over the economy in Washington. The gamblers might bet on the dollar going up, but the wise will be the ones paying attention to US dollar collapse predictions. Much of Trump's economic strategy and recovery plan hinge on the passing of his fiscal reform. However, it's too radical and may even be too unrealistic. As presented to Congress, loaded with major tax cuts for corporations and for private individuals alike, in theory it could help stimulate growth and raise the standard of living for everybody. The logic of Trump's tax reform is that the tide lifts all boats. It's another interpretation of the trickle-down economics that President Ronald Reagan made popular in his first term, 1981 to 1985. But, as that plan proved, it's really only good for a few, and it produces huge debt. It's one of the reasons that the US dollar has lost so much strength over the past 30 to 40 years. One of the big pillars of Trump's economic reform is the tax reform. It's one of the most ambitious fiscal reforms to date, bigger even than what Reagan did in the 1980s. But there are many doubts about its viability. Perhaps Trump or more likely the Republicans in Congress, will have to revise the plan and dilute its provisions. According to rumors, there has been pressure to shave off one of the primary components of the tax bill. This is the one that would lower corporate taxes to 20%. At best, that will have to be postponed. While the U.S. has a relatively higher corporate tax rate than many of its industrialized competitors, it also allows for more numerous and generous tax deductions. Similarly, there's the ever-present perception and suspicion that the richest Americans are still going to end up as the biggest beneficiaries of the tax reform. As political tensions rise internationally and domestically, President Trump can't seem to make a single favorable move in the eyes of Democrats, meaning he could be a sitting duck. His opponents in Congress and there's plenty of bipartisan opposition to go around will weaken the White House politically, resulting in a diluted tax bill, regardless of what else happens. The Yuan. Before any discussion over the weakness of the U.S. economy, and if you doubt that, just look at the number of small and large-sized retail chains collapsing, it's worth noting the effect of the Chinese Yuan. The more international currencies there are, the more the dollar faces competition. The value of an international currency like the dollar derives not only from interest rates and pure economic strength. Like gold, there is a strong element of perception. The dollar's strength, especially since the end of World War II, has been tied to U.S. economic strength and political stability. But it has also been tied to U.S. military might. Now, 
the world seems ready to shift toward a world where the U.S. is no longer the only hegemony on the bloc. After the collapse of the Soviet Empire in 1990, the United States made the mistake of believing it was the only superpower. The mistake was good at first, helping speed up the transfer of technology from the military to the civilian realm. Few remember that the Internet and email were first used by the military. Raytheon Company worked on the related infrastructure and basic idea of a connected information storage and access system in the late 1960s. The apparent victory of the American system over the Soviet one eased security considerations and, by 1995, many people were using the Internet. By 2000, there were few people left in the world that were not using the Internet. American businesses and finance benefited tremendously from the emergence of the so-called tech sector. It became, and still remains, the main growth generator in the American economy. But how long can America's dominance last? China's closing in. Fast. China is catching up quickly in every field of technology. Meanwhile, more and more American companies have moved their manufacturing to China already. Moreover, the Chinese are also expanding their military capabilities, building their own military vessels, stealth fighter jets, and smart weapons. They're even planning a space mission to the moon. China's international influence is rising in conjunction with its technology and military capacity. Part of that growing influence includes the yuan. China's currency is growing in importance. The International Monetary Fund IMF, recently included it as a special drawing rights currency. Therefore, many central banks around the world are buying the yuan, with central banks reported having accumulated holdings valued at over $90 billion at the end of 2016. Just six months later, those same central banks held just short of $100 billion. Internationally, and even in the domestic U.S., there is uncertainty that the yuan can continue to rise at this unexpectedly rapid pace. Apart from the shift or erosion of American influence, the United States has built up a considerable but unfortunate phenomenon, debt. U.S. debt keeps growing larger and Trump's aforementioned fiscal policies could accelerate the rise of debt rather than slow it down. Trump's plan risks pushing debt higher, well beyond the current $20 trillion. Therefore, the Federal Reserve will be enabled to raise interest rates. Similarly, other governments will want to diversify their monetary reserves, accumulating currencies that are not the U.S. dollar. China, of course, is one of these key players. The Bank of China alone holds about $1 trillion, and it has announced its intention to divest part of its U.S. dollar reserve. It plans to do this by using gold-backed future contracts and pricing oil in yuan. After taking concrete steps to dethrone the U.S. as the top tech power, China is closing in on the dollar. Higher interest rates will explode the market. Trump has chosen Jerome Powell to succeed Janet Yellen as chairperson of the Federal Reserve. Powell is not a fan of raising rates. He may be even less inclined than the outgoing Yellen. Should any Fed chair raise interest rates while the U.S. debt keeps growing, the U.S. government will struggle even to pay back interest on the debt. At the current low level, the interest owed is more than $270 billion. With rates at a more normal or historical level, the interest alone could top $1 trillion. For various reasons, Quantitative easing QE, will therefore have to continue. American consumers, many of whom are struggling to cope with one form of debt or another, would get an increased perception of wealth with interest rates kept low. Higher rates would mean much higher interest on car loans, student loans, and mortgages. The U.S. comes closer to recession with every interest rate hike. Higher interest hurts the ability to borrow, which could prompt a recession. Trump has enough problems to worry about without adding that one to the list. Investors don't seem to be paying much attention to the value of stocks, much less the U.S. dollar. But they are wrong. The stock markets long ago passed the point of irrational exuberance. They are now entering downright spooky territory, and the level of risk is massive. Any unexpected economic move, such as an interest rate hike, could now be the proverbial drop that spills the cup. Raising interest rates is the main way to help the dollar sustain its value against major currencies, especially since many central banks, 
such as the European Central Bank and the Bank of England, have hinted that they're ready to adopt a tighter monetary policy. Investors are hungry for our performance in the markets. They've been getting it, yet that only makes the inevitable collapse harder. Trump will exercise more influence than other recent presidents over monetary policy. He will be careful to let interest move much higher to prevent a crack on Wall Street. That will eventually start pushing against the rise of the dollar. Special Reports is a daily show that will cover issues surrounding the economic collapse. All our reports and daily alert news are backed up by source links. We work very hard to bring you the facts, and we research everything before presenting the report. Subscribe for latest on financial crisis, oil price, global economic collapse, dollar collapse, gold, silver, bitcoin, global reset, new world order, economic collapse, economic news, political geopolitical news. Today, we talk about, martial law is no conspiracy, something big is going on. Former U.S. Congressman and Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul joins Alex Jones of InfoWars, talk with us about one of the most dangerous pieces of legislation to come across Congress in a long time. What Jones calls soft, creeping, frog in the pole, we learn here that martial law in America is no conspiracy theory as even Democratic Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut is calling SJ Res 29 a declaration of international martial law as seen in this speech in the second video below in full. With a global economy now in free fall and even stores in the U.S. beginning to feel the hit as shared in this new story from SHTFPLAN's Jeremiah Johnson who tells us about store inventory levels being reduced nationwide. The warning to stock up now while we still can rings out is in passing this open-ended war authorization, the U.S. Constitution will be all but a dead letter. While most Americans are likely clueless about the possibility of martial law in our near future, it's very easy to see the possible future need for it for that very reason. Most Americans are either dependent upon the government to survive in 2016 America or are struggling themselves in this economy with little time to pay attention to the global economy falling apart much less prepare themselves and their families for what's likely to come. When it all hits the fan and the meltdown is complete, millions of people in all of the big cities across America will likely be totally unprepared and has been reported many times on AMP and across the alternative news. Massive civil unrest and the total breakdown of society are strong possibilities that the government will have to contend with if it manages to stay intact. From CBS Los Angeles just today we learned that the LAPD is warning the people of Los Angeles to prepare for longer than usual emergency response times and advising them to prepare to protect themselves. They say more officers are necessary. We also learned today from the New York Times that rationing has begun in America and we should expect that shortages will be the new normal in medicine. Across the country more signs of collapse emerge daily that help to prove to us that not only will martial law likely be put into place, but for very good reason once the collapse enters breakneck speed. Without law and order in the big cities of America during total collapse, they'll quickly turn into death zones. As Ron Paul and Alex Jones proved to us in this video, of course martial law isn't a cloud and true, especially with talk of martial law now in the air and within U.S. Congress. Senator Murphy's warning to America should not go unheeded and Ron Paul completely backs up his warning and goes beyond what Murphy has told us is outlined below. Quotes this resolution is a total rewrite of the War Powers Clause of the Constitution. Let's be clear about that, Democrat Senator Chris Murphy said on the Senate floor last week in regards to S.J. Res. 29 a bill purporting to give the sitting U.S. president the power to declare war on ISIS. It is essentially a declaration of international martial law, Murphy said. A sweeping transfer of military power to the president that will allow him or her to send U.S. troops almost anywhere in the world for any reason with absolutely no limitations, Senator Murphy described, adding that Article I, Section 8, Clause 11 of the Constitution vests in Congress the responsibility to declare war. While the ink is still wet on this resolution, it's safe to say that this resolution is the wrong way to authorize war against ISIS, Murphy said. The language of this resolution is dangerous and it is unprecedented. 
the American people certainly don't want Congress to hand over the power to the President to send our troops into any country anywhere in the world for almost any reason. And that's what this resolution would do. With Senator Lindsey Graham among the four co-sponsors of this bill, Ron Paul warned on his own website that if this open-ended war authorization is passed, the U.S. Constitution will have become all but a dead letter. Do we really want Barack Obama, or any other president for that conspiracy theory? It may indeed one day be the rule of law in America and some argue it already is as the country completes its financial plummet and likely hundreds of millions of Americans go completely unprepared for the outcome. Of course, for our friends and families and loved ones and first responders and Americans across the country, we pray that this never happens in America. We'd be ignorant and foolish, though, to ignore the warning signs and to avoid preparing our own selves and families for the eventual outcome that comes about as the economy prepares to hit rock bottom. We'd like to think that those Americans who are prepared for such events will be assets to the authorities who impose martial law as the prepared won't be looting the stores and robbing their neighbors, but will be staying away from the madness as best we can. We need to be ready for it though. As we are warned here, the big event is in our sight. We see, Duterte considers martial law for entire Philippines. The Philippine president has threatened to impose martial law nationwide to combat a serious threat in the southern region of Mindanao after fighters there beheaded the police officer and took churchgoers hostage. The ongoing violence has forced thousands to flee the city of Marawi, located about 816 kilometers south of the capital Manila. I will not hesitate to do anything and everything to protect and preserve the Filipino nation, Rodrigo Duterte said on Wednesday after arriving back in Manila from his trip to Russia. I might declare martial law throughout the country to protect the people. Duterte declared martial law on Tuesday in Mindanao, which makes up roughly one matter, to have the ability to do whatever they want with our military, including deploying them against the American people within our own country. From Ron Paul. While the Washington snowstorm dominated news coverage this week, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was operating behind the scenes to rush through the Senate what may be the most massive transfer of power from the legislative to the executive branch in our history. The senior senator from Kentucky is scheming, along with Senator Lindsey Graham, to bypass normal Senate procedure to fast-track legislation to grant the president the authority to wage unlimited war for as long as he or his successors may wish. The legislation makes the unconstitutional Iraq War Authorization of 2002 look like a walk in the park. It will allow this president and future presidents to wage war against ISIS without restrictions on time, geographic scope, or the use of ground troops. It is a completely open-ended authorization for the president to use the military as he wishes for as long as he or she wishes. Even President Obama has expressed concern over how willing Congress is to hand him unlimited power to wage war. The purpose of the legislative branch of our government is to restrict the executive branch's power. The founders understood that an all-powerful king who could wage war at will was the greatest threat to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is why they created the People's Branch, the Congress, to prevent the emergence of an all-powerful autocrat to drag the country to endless war. Sadly, Congress is surrendering its power to declare war. Let's be clear, if Senate Majority Leader McConnell succeeds